Hi everybody. In today's video, I am going to show you an introduction to Bitmap Query Language, or BQL for short. If you know SQL for databases, you know 90% of BQL already. What I'm going to be doing in this video is the first half, I'm, or a few minutes at least, I'm going to show you a few example bitmap query uh, language uh, that we're going to execute here in pixeldatabase.net. And if you are a C Sharp developer or anyone that wants to learn how to program in C Sharp and do graphics, I'm going to show you a very simple program. And you don't actually need to know how to code at all because the program's written. So, But I'll show you how to do everything I show you here in pixeldatabase.net. The same NuGet package, datajuggler.pixeldatabase, powers this, and this program we're going to clone from GitHub here in a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and get started if you want to stick around. The first thing I'm going to do, if you look at this chalkboard, the green is kind of, uh, I guess you would just call it like a dirty chalkboard or, you know, it's just not, uh, it's got a lot of different colors of green in it. So what we're going to do is normalize the green. What normalize does is the pixels that are below the min value will get raised up by the step until they reach the minimum value. Same with the bright pixels, they will get minimized by the step until they're in the correct range. If you run a query without the where clause, the entire image will get updated. And we don't want that because that looks like that. So what we're going to do is put all this back. Sorry. Kind of messed up my little text box there. But by having this whole query here, we're going to normalize the green, but only here where blue green is between 69 and 240, and the pixels are in this general area. And what blue green is, it's just the sum of blue plus green, which in this case is 148. And if you look at the chalkboard, some of, some of it's already there, but some of it is quite a bit darker, some is brighter. So what we're going to do is run this query, and that'll just kind of normalize it to look like a clean chalkboard, or that looks a little bluer possibly. But And you have to do this one color at a time. I tried to allow multiple colors at one query, but it didn't work. Okay, so that was our first query. Now I'm going to show you one more. Okay, in this one, what we're going to do is change the yellow text to orange. And if I go ahead and run this, I'll just show you. And the way that works, again, you give it an X value. I did X less than, and I did Y greater than right here. And then again, I used green red, which is just green plus red. And I made sure it was greater than 400. So if I undo the last query, you can see green red is pretty bright there. And this last one, blue is less than 50. The reason that is there, because if it's not, you'll see the desk gets also done. And the way to differentiate the desk is if you look at the desk, the blue is pretty high. But if you look at this, there's not any blue. So I just put blue less than 50. And that way the desk is excluded. OK, so that was another simple example. And now I'll show you a different image. This one, we're going to change the purple shoelaces to blue and leave the rest of the image as unaffected as possible. So to do that, let me grab another query here. And the way that works, is the, the purple is just blue and red. So if you take, take the red out of the purple, then you're left with mostly blue. The red is still there, but the blue is more predominant. And green red diff less than 20, if I undo it and show you that, the green is 119 and the red is much higher. So if you subtract that, you're going to get a negative number. That is approximately negative 70. But I just did less than negative 20. And that way, these others are very close. They're not grayscale completely, but they're very close. So by running that, it does only the blue or in that little tag there, whatever that's called. All right, and then now we are going to do one last query, and this will just make those blue shoelaces green. So it's very similar. We're going to swap the blue and the green, but the where clause is only going to be the blue green diff is greater than 20. So if you look at the blue, blue is quite a bit, you know, it's going to be about 100 or 90, somewhere in there. 
anything in that area, but all these are, those are going to be like very close to zero. That's how it does the green. So that was my very short demo of bitmap query language. The rest of this video, I'm going to slip over to GitHub, and this is my GitHub repo if you want to come star any projects. We have a sale every day inviting shoplifters. I'm going to click on repositories and text imagery. And I'm going to just clone this. And now I'm going to open Visual Studio 2022. And you do need to make sure you have WinForms enabled. Now I'm going to click on clone a repository. Paste that in here. And we're going to put this in projects. Clone the project. Click on it. It should just run. You shouldn't have to do anything, but I'll just I'll give you a very quick tour of this project before we run it. The first thing I'm going to show you is this project includes a list of 100 sound effects. I asked ChatGPT or Azure OpenAI ChatGPT 4.0 for a list of 100 sound effects because that's my next video coming up. I found the coolest ever AI sound effect generator, and it's free. And it's open source and you can install it locally. And I'm going to make a video about that while I'm making a hundred sound effects. But my first idea was I was going to create a hundred videos to go with my hundred sound effects. But with my 30 video limit and most of the videos are pretty lousy, I decided to a uh, hundred images and I was going to number them one through a hundred and put the sound effect name at the bottom. And I didn't want to do that by hand, so I wrote this program. I'm going to go ahead and run it, and then I'll give you a very quick code review, and that's the end of this video. Everything is filled in for you, so it should just run. If you don't have a temp folder on your C drive, what's wrong with you? First question. You can always change this, and I will show you where to change this if you want to change the default here in just a second. For the back color, you can either type in an RGB value like is shown here or a named .NET color. And if you don't know the .NET get colors, just Google .NET named colors and you'll get a bunch of hits for that. I'm using impact for the font for the default, but you can change that. I'll show you where to change the default value if you like. The font size I'm using is 80 and this count is populated when you select the text file here and it was already selected for you but the count comes from that file so if you had a file with 50 here that would show 50 if you ever just want to test it you can set it to two or three or five okay so that's enough of me talking and start okay our list has finished now i will show you what we created first i'll just show you number one the first thing it does is it draws a rectangle in the back color that you selected. Then the next thing it does is draws the text that you selected in black. And then what it does is it changes the black text to the color you selected for your foreground. There is one limitation to this program at its current state. This was just a quick demo I threw together. But the limitation is the foreground color must be brighter than your background color. I could make it an option or you could always change it in code. And the same thing down at the bottom. I draw the rectangle, draw the text in black for that item number from the list, and then I switch it to your color. So that's basically everything to this program. And I'll just show you one more just to show you number 95 should be 95. It is. And everything is there. That is the end of this part and now I'm going to give you a very quick code review and that will be the end of this video. I'm going to go to my start button. There's a start button underscore click. Okay. These options here are actually here because when I was debugging I wanted to turn off steps. I'm actually running six different queries so I wanted to be able to debug you know individual parts. Uh, but you could I could turn it off, but if you ever want to not do one of these, just set it to false. And the very first thing, the most important thing you must do if you ever want to use datajuggler.pixel database is add a NuGet package datajuggler.pixel database. That is what powers this project and it powers pixeldatabase.net. The first thing you're going to want to learn how to do is load a pixel database, and it's very simple. 
This loads from the source file, and the source file is just your file selector. If I click on main form, this is called a label text box browser control, which is, as the name says, it's a label, a text box, and it's got a file selector here. You click on that, and a file dialog opens. Or this one is, and this one has browse type of folder. It's got folder, file, or you can also set a custom action. And then here, these are all just label text box controls. So it's just a label and a text box. It's just a faster way to build UIs than having to put a label and a text box. So once you have the pixel database loaded, this is a this is how I get the margin. It's just the height minus 200. I create two points where the text is going to be drawn. This is the point for the number, and this is the point for the list item describing the name of the sound effect. And here, I just clone a pixel database each time because I don't want to reload it and I don't want to change our original whenever we're running these queries. Now the first query we're going to do is draw the number rectangle. So it's very simple, just update, set color. There has to be a new line character. It's just a, this new line is just a faster way of typing environment.newline. So it's just update, set color, and then it's where X is less than 200, Y is less than 200. And the color is whatever you type in that box. So make sure you type in a color. Then it runs the query. And this is where I get the pixel at zero, zero. So I know what color to use to change it whenever I want to change the highlight color. I just know it has to be between black is zero. So it's just got to be lower than this color and greater than zero. And here we draw the number text. And the first one is just the number. So I'm in a loop zero to the count so it's just one two etc and then when it draws the text it just puts it in horizontal center and vertical center and then the here we change the color and this is where it does the update set color to whatever color you have in your text color and it just says where it's less than and then here does the exact same thing, draws the bottom rectangle, but here uses the margin. Y is greater than the margin, which is just 200 pixels less than the height of your input. So it draws 200 pixels at the bottom is another way of saying that. And then finally, we apply that query. And here the pixel query will show you the pixels that were updated if you needed to debug it or display it. I find this interesting. I do load the text lines. This is called, this is a text line is just a line of text. And I parse the text lines using data juggler ultimate helper. And this is my favorite way to work with text. It makes it super simple. And this parameter here parses the words. And when I come down here and say capitalize first character, because my list, if you look at this, like the, the second one, are not capitalized. I could have told ChatGPT to parse the words and I draw the text, same thing in this horizontal and vertical center. And then here I just change the color back. So that is the end of the code review. Sorry, it wasn't really a planned video. I just wanted to throw this together. But if you ever needed to tag or label a bunch of images, could have created more options if you ever wanted to put like the title at the top. This was all just a demo, so I threw it all together. Thanks for watching, and let me know your thoughts on bitmap query language and pixeldatabase.net or anything else. Have a great day.